Hi, welcome to Curtis Stage Video Tutorials. Today's tutorial, we're going to talk about Photoshop and we're going to do a fun project where we put a logo on a t shirt and make it look realistic. So, we're going to go for something that looks kind of like this, where we have a plain green shirt here and then superimpose that logo on top of it. So, let's get started. So, what I want to do is I want to open up uh, two things. I want to open up, obviously, a t shirt picture. Um, I picked one with wrinkles in it because what we're going to do is we're going to make what's called a displacement map and this map is going to warp our logo's edges to match the, the uh, wrinkles on this shirt. So I've got two, I've got two uh, files here. I've got the shirt and I've got the logo as you can see. The first thing we want to do is we want to duplicate this layer that is this t-shirt. So we can do it two ways. We can do the keyboard shortcut uh, on an apple is command J. Uh, or we can take this and we can drag the layer down to the uh, Add New Layer button down here, and that will duplicate it. So Command J is what I'm going to do. So we have this duplicate layer. Now we've got to do a few things to this duplicate layer to make actually a displacement map. That's the map that we're going to use to, uh, to tell the logo how to curve its edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to go Image, Adjustments on the top bar, to go all the way down here, we want to desaturate this so it takes out all the color information. That's the first step. Second step is to go to Filter on the top bar, and we're going to go to Blur and Gaussian Blur. And we're going to pick a slight blur on this. The radius is kind of, every, every image is going to be slightly different. It depends on the size of your image in pixels, but uh, I don't want the image to be too blurry, so we just want kind of a soft, silky look. This is going to extend the displacement map out just a little bit. It's going to kind of move it just a tad off of its edges. And we're going to click OK to that. And then the next step we're going to do is we're going to actually save this file as a separate file out onto our hard drive or onto our desktop. So we're going to go to File, Save As. And we're going to go here and we're going to call this a map. So in other words, I had green shirt and now I want to call it uh, a green shirt map, let's say. And I'm, so I'm going to give it a name that I'm going to remember. It has to be a Photoshop document. So when you're saving it, the format needs to be in Photoshop. It cannot be a JPEG or any other format for this to work. So I'm going to click Save. So now I have a copy of it on the desktop. I'm going to turn off the eyeball back on my original image. I'm going to turn off the eyeball here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my Move tool, my black arrow tool uh, in Photoshop in the tool panel. And I'm going to bring my logo into this image, into this shirt image. Now notice my logo here has a transparent background. You want to do that before you start this process. So if you have a logo with white around it or a color around it, you want to get rid of that. And how do I know I have a transparent background? Because I see this checkerboard pattern here. So I'm going to take this logo and bring it into this layer. Now obviously it's way too big, so Command minus. I'm going to zoom out, and I'm going to Command T, transform. And I'm going to shrink this logo down so it will fit. And Command plus and zoom back in. Here we go. I'm going to shrink this down so it fits onto the front of the shirt. So I'm holding Shift as I'm shrinking this. I'm pulling the, one of the corners and holding Shift to keep the aspect ratio the same. So that looks pretty good. I've kind of to put it on the shirt somewhere in there and get it in place. Once I get it into place and then I apply the displacement map to it, I don't want to move this logo, otherwise the map won't match. So here we go. I'm going to hit the check mark up here to apply that. So that looks good and this is where I want it. Now we're going to add the displacement map to this logo. So what we're going to do is I make sure that I'm clicked on this logo layer. I'm going to go up here to Filter, Distort, and I'm going to go to Displace. It's going to say, what would you like to displace, how, how big, and the, and the default is 10 by 10 in scale. So I'm going to leave it at that. It looks pretty good. And then I'm going to make sure that the displacement map says Stretch to Fit, and then it says Repeat Edge Pixels. So we want these two just like this. That's usually the default. I'm going to click OK. Now it's going to ask me to pick which image I want to use. Well, it's that file we saved a second ago. So I'm going to go here to Green Shirt Map 2 PSD, open that up. And then you'll notice if you zoom in that it used that other image to create 
the warped edges. So they're going to follow along with the edges here. Now, it doesn't look good yet. It's almost there. We could use a blend mode to composite these two layers together. So if I went up here onto my logo layer and I went up to where it says normal here, this is our blend modes. I can go down here and do a blend mode, let's say like multiply, and that's going to, you know, knock out all the color there. What multiply does is it knocks out any lights in an image. So you see that the, this logo got darker. If I went down to screen, it would knock out any darks. So that's what blend modes do. They composite one image with the other image below it. Um, I'm going to try this area right here, which knocks out 50%. Uh, so it's like a 50% gray. So it's looking for midtones essentially. So if I go to soft light, well, that looks pretty good. Uh, hard light, well, it looks pretty good there. Now I'm going to make this look even better. What I want to do is I'm going to just do some subtle adjustments. I mean, this I could stop right here, and if I zoom in pretty close, you can see that I can see some of the shadows from the T-shirt in the edges or in the um, material of the logo. So it looks like the logo is on the material now with that blend mode. If I didn't have the blend mode on, if I went back to normal, you'll see it... I'm going to do the blend mode though. I'm going to go back and pick hard light. I've got the opacity. I'm going to lower that down just a little bit on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. So Command J, duplicate. And when I duplicate this layer, I'm going to desaturate this layer and then I'm going to do a blend mode on this one. So I'm going to go to uh, Image, Adjustments, Desaturate. So now it is just basically a grayscale image. It's barely there. I'm going to raise its opacity up a little bit higher. And now when I turn these both on, I've got a little bit better. I can go here and I can pick one of these other ones. Vivid light, hard light, soft light. Soft light looks pretty good. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you see it's a subtle adjustment, but it brings some of my darks back in. I can also do something like add a levels adjustment here to even kind of make this a little bit better. How would I do that? I do a layer adjustment. I go up to the top bar up here, layer new adjustment layer, which is a non-destructive layer. And then I can go down in here and I can pick any one of these. I'm going to go to levels, which adjusts the luma in, an, in any image. And I'm going to click this little button right here where it says use previous layer to create a clipping mask because I only want this to affect the layer directly below this new adjustment layer. So I'm going to check that, click OK. And you'll see that a properties panel comes up here. I'm going to move this over here so we can see it. You'll also notice that on my layers panel right here, there's a little arrow there pointing down. That's telling me that I have this as a clipping path or a clipping mask with the layer below it. And I can take that off and it would affect all the layers below. So if I hold down option, I click like this. If I hold down option and click right in between those, see how I can turn it on and off. Okay. If I turn it off and I, and I do some adjustments, you see how it's going to adjust every single layer below it? Well, I maybe don't want that. So I'm going to turn it back on by holding Option, clicking right in between the two layers. So I click Option. Now I've got that clipping mask on. And so now what I can do is I can adjust this. And in the properties, you'll see there's three different little uh, buttons here. And this one's for the darks. This is for the midtones. And this is for the lights. This thing that we're seeing right here is called a histogram. That's showing me the values of dark, midtones, and lights within the image. And they're kind of piling up these pixels. So you're seeing these little spikes here. And those are piles of pixels. Think of it as like Tetris or something, where pixels are kind of coming down like the game Tetris from the top down, and they're building up. And that's, that's where we're seeing these. This is tonality here. Um, and so if you've ever seen this little mountain here called a histogram and wondered how it was comprised, think of it as like a Tetris thing where pixels are being piled up. So you can see that I can adjust the midtone on this and then I can kind of more fine tune. And if I zoom in, Command Plus, I zoom in and I can look at the surface of this thing. I basically want to see the texture of the shirt through, but I also want to be able to adjust this. If I make it too bright, obviously it's, gonna, it's not going to look real. So I kind of want to adjust this so that I can get a nice looking image and see the texture of the shirt through. That looks pretty good. All right, so there you have it. Obviously this is on a green shirt, so it's kind of interesting when it's on a green shirt. If I did it on a white shirt, I could do something like this. So I have one here that's on a white shirt. And this, this shirt didn't have as many wrinkles, but you'll see that 
here it is with you know a few wrinkles right in here so you can see it kind of looking realistic there and there's one little wrinkle with this so it can be very subtle as well and the goal here of course is to try to you know get this looking as real as possible so I think that looks pretty good and the green one looks even more realistic just because there's more re there's more wrinkles in the shirt so then with the displacement map that's happening you're really getting that logo to kind of conform to what the shirt looks like before you put it on there. Alright, that's another Curtis Stage video tutorial. Thanks for watching.